Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to the World Justice Project's fifth global forum. In the next few minutes, I will try to provide a bit of context for this week's programs in hopes that it might be useful to you. Please understand that this is one person's opinions and observations, and many of you will have your own, which will be of more value, but perhaps I can at least stimulate your own thinking about the rule of law. To begin with, you all, the audience, the most important part of this forum, you are here because each of you represents an organization which has in some way advanced the rule of law. You are part of a committed and competent organization, which is part of the movement. And this week we are a sort of Congress, if you will, a Congress of rule of law advocates. You represent 75 countries. You represent more than 20 work disciplines. And as we say often, it is not the rule of lawyers and judges. The rule of law matters to all walks of work. And it's important to us that we bring to our Congresses folks other than legal practitioners and judges, that we have architects and engineers and medical doctors and business people and teachers and artists and faith leaders, all part of a group that wants to advance the rule of law for the benefit of the broad community. What's in store for you, we hope this week, if we are successful in our planning and execution, is the sharing of insights and exhortations from leaders in the field of the rule of law as well as planning activities, especially practical, locally-led programs, which in some manner advance the rule of law in your community. The substance we trust will be both inspirational in some ways and practical and useful to you in others. One person's view of the geopolitical landscape, uh, just a snapshot, <laughs> It changes week to week, does it not, these days? Um, in no particular order of importance, they're all important challenges, I think. There is, of course, terrorism on our doorsteps. There is the rampant straining of the inequality of economic opportunity around the world. There is the climate, whatever you think of it. It is <laughs> Mother Nature's trump card. There is change all around us, a frightening amount in terms of its speed and its scale. We have never faced this kind of change before. Um, we have technology which is creating some of the change and is trying to help us deal with the change. Is it always as useful as we would like it to be? To what extent are, we, are our teenagers becoming screenagers? Who's curating data as it gets to us? All interesting questions, I think. We have a very connected but a quite unstable global economy. We have new brands of populism and isolationism which are problematic in many regards. We have tribalism which is a very good thing up to a point and beyond that point can become a negative influence. We have journalism which is being compromised and repressed all over the world and we have an ambiguous jurisprudence, a, something of a crazy quilt of jurisprudence around the world. To live and to work and to make advances in one country or the other depends on the laws of those countries and there's an enormous variety in that regard. There are, of course, resources to help balance those challenges. Again, just one person's view. Um, we have an expanding knowledge base. We create more knowledge in an hour these days than our forebearers could create in a year or a decade. We have new means of communication, again, which are something of a mixed blessing, uh, but a powerful set of tools. We have broader political involvement, more people involved in politics and governance. We have, importantly, more opportunities to harness the intellect and the imagination and the leadership of women. We have a trend towards market economies around the world. 
Two years ago, I would have said on this line, a trend towards market economies and rule of law regimes. I'm afraid I can't say that today, not with what's going on around the world, which is all the more important for us, which is why it's all the more important for us to be meeting here this week to find ways to advance the rule of law. We have increasing awareness, however, about this concept of the rule of law. It's become, it's become a part of the conversation in a way that it wasn't even a year ago. Uh, those of you, all of you in the field will recognize the threshold challenge we all recognize, which is when you talk with someone about the rule of law, you have to find a way to connect with that listener. What is the rule of law? Uh, and even among the legal profession, there's a lot of confusion about that going outside, there's even more, but it is becoming a much more commonly used phrase and that I think is an opportunity. And finally, there's the human spirit. Justice Ginsburg, of course, was way ahead of me in quoting from Martin Luther King last night, but this was in the slide deck from last week and it's worth putting on the screen, I think, so that we can all see it in writing and his brilliant declaration that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it tends towards justice. Folk want freedom and they want their liberties and that is an enormous resource for the movement to advance the rule of law. A quick status report on the World Justice Project, your host. We have been in this business now for 10 years. We have our three lines of business and we've tried to grow each of those lines of business in ways you will learn more about later. Research and scholarship is our first line of business. Rule of law index for measuring is our second. And what we call engagement is our third line of business. Engagement meaning, in our case, strategic convenings, especially global forums like this one. The global network of advocates and practical locally led programs which in some way advance the rule of law. First line of business research and scholarship, what's going on in that regard. We have managed to persuade leading scholars from around the world to form a consortium. There are now more than 70 members of that consortium. And the point is to encourage more scholarship, more research, more scholarship, more teaching of the rule of law in a very transdisciplinary way. The rule of law is fascinating, we believe, to the academy whether from the perspective of the law or economics or anthropology or political science and government, there's almost nowhere in the academy that there isn't some connection with the rule of law, at least as we understand its broad meaning. And it has been something, I think, fair to say as an outsider, something of a stepchild of a subject with the academy. This consortium is working smart to find ways to bring more attention to the rule of law as a subject worthy of, again, research, scholarship, and teaching. And it is the cornerstone of our mission. We can't be taken seriously as advocates of this thing called the rule of law if we don't have an intellectual and academic base, basis that proves that it has meaning and importance. We've had two meetings of the consortium. Meetings tend to breed communication, which tends to provoke collaboration. Uh, more collaboration is almost always a good thing for progress. And our first meeting was at the University of Chicago Law School in the fall of 2014. More recently, we were at the Stanford Law School in the spring of 2016. Again, the point is if we can be a part of, even a small part of a sort of renaissance of acknowledgement of the importance of the rule of law in the academy, more students will be taught and will become advocates after graduation, but also there'll be more communication to the broad population of, about the rule of law. In terms of our second line of business, the WJP Rule of Law Index, you all have hard copy in your conference bags. We are now measuring 113 countries. When we first went into the field eight years ago, I think we were measuring 25 or six countries. Um, these 113 countries represent something like 93 or 94% of the world's population. We're not finished, there are more countries we'd like to measure, so bear with us. 
We are also going broader and deeper in a few countries, most importantly, Afghanistan and Pakistan these days, and we have forthcoming our first subnational and our first criminal justice indexes in Mexico. If that work goes well in Mexico, we hope to be able to bring that same methodology for subnational and specific subject indexes, especially criminal justice, to other countries. In terms of the index itself, we are doing more analysis to point out highlights and trends over time, now that we've been in the field for these eight years, and we want to do a better job of visualizing that data to make it more meaningful and obvious to a broader audience. In the area of engagement, strategic convenings, what we've learned in the last several years is that we can have a very high impact if we prepare well for a single country visit. Only where we are invited by an individual who can organize a cross-section of folks interested in advancing the rule of law, or better even, by an organization that's devoted to advancing the rule of law. Our role is to bring data from the index in the form of a country report, 40 to 60 to 80 pages, provide that data to that workshop, to those folks, and be a resource for them as they deliberate and determine, given that additional data, their own experiences and perceptions, where they might intervene in a meaningful fashion to advance the rule of law in their country. We have done this in Tunisia, in Malawi, in Indonesia, and in Senegal, and plan to continue to do this, we hope, at the rate of at least two or three countries per year. And then the notion is to build those single country meetings into multi-country regional meetings, and in turn the regional meetings as a feeder system, if you will, for the global forums such as this one. In terms of a rule of law network, we call it the resource hub on our website. Please have a look at it. The notion is that if we can collect and curate for seriousness of purpose, for competence, organizations organized by the nine index factors and create that sort of a roster, that sort of a hub on our website that we will go from the 1,000 organizations who are currently there to as many as 5,000 organizations globally. And the whole point is connections between those organizations, a virtual network operating 24-7, if you will, but also the connection between the visitors to the website and those organizations. And out of that network will become, we think, will come, we think, a multiplier effect, a, a viral broadening of the community of rule of law advocates. In terms of the third aspect of engagement, these practical locally led programs, uh, our role is to inspire, incubate, and accelerate those programs where we can. Uh, there's a library of those programs currently on our website. There are 90 of them. We hope that when we reconvene as a global forum in two years, we'll be able to report a much larger number and you will learn a good deal more about that strategy and examples of those programs at the plenary session here in the auditorium immediately following the coffee break. A movement towards advancing the rule of law demands a common language, it seems to me. And let me take just a few minutes to engage with you in a discussion of this mantra, which is, meaning, measuring, and mattering. And I forgive, forgive me for coining the term mattering. Um, what is the meaning of the rule of law? What's the measuring of it? And what is the mattering of the rule of law? Does it, does it really matter in a real world sense? To begin with meaning, the rule of law is, was not invented um, by a constitutional liberal democracy in the West. It began at least as long ago as 4,000 years, give or take a few decades, in Mesopotamia, thanks to Hammurabi and his code. And as you come forward in time, these are just a few ticks on the timeline. You can add your own, uh, but these are all, at least by some measure, notable times of the development and reinforcement of the concept of the rule of law.
without a generally accepted definition of the concept of the rule of law, it seems to us that advancing the rule of law becomes at best problematic. And I think it's Tom Carruthers at the Carnegie Endowment for Peace who said it best when he said, the concept of the rule of law is capacious. There's almost as many definitions as, they, as there are advocates. Surely there's some value in clustering around a generally accepted definition of the rule of law. We offer for your consideration and criticism and improvement our definition. It's four universal principles in shorthand. Accountability of public and private actors under a set of just laws. Government systems which are open and some form of accessible and impartial dispute resolution. These universal principles are designed to be, and I underscore, universal, a fair starting point for analyzing and even measuring rule of law in any number of regimes around the world without regard to the brand of government. We are not apologists for a particular brand of government. We are advocates for having governments measure up against these universal principles, if you will. Let's hear from Professor Jenny Martinez at the Stanford Law School about definition. Let's hear from Jenny Martinez. I think we're getting close. If I could just find the cursor. Thank you. Determining how to improve rule of law is one of the really big problems in the world today. Until the World Justice Project, there wasn't a good universal definition of rule of law and there weren't any studies that measured it across the globe in a concrete way. And what WJP has done is come up, first of all, with a very useful definition of rule of law that looks at it across a bunch of different dimensions. Secondly, measuring. Measuring adherence to the rule of law as we understand it in the aforementioned sense plainly without some form of accurate, timely measurement of adherence, advancement of the rule of law would be impractical. That's the rationale for our undertaking our indexing on an annual basis now of these 113 countries. We go from the four universal principles that make up the definition to these nine factors of the rule of law. This is all in your books. It's also even more fun on the website where you can be interactive with it and do some manipulation. But these are, the, these are the nine factors that the four universal principles lead us to. And in turn, from those nine factors are derived 47 sub-factors also sent out in the book. And from those 47 sub-factors, there are created some 500 variables measuring how the rule of law is both experienced and perceived in these countries. And the way we go about it is to have 1,000 surveys of randomly selected households in each country. And these are interviews typically in person and they are in the language and dialect of the country in question. We triangulate that, those survey findings with expert questionnaires of folk who have more expert informed opinions and observations of the way the rule of law works in the country. And that's how we come up with our data. Always checking that data against other sources in case there might be some outliers or some obvious mistakes. A key point of this index, built by Alex Ponce, who's the, our head of research, by Juan Botero, our executive director, and by Mark Agrast, who's here with ASIL in the audience, 
a key aspect of this rule of law index is that virtually, virtually all of the data that comes from the index is original. Data never been available before. We do not incorporate other folks' data. It's all directly from our surveys of the households and of the experts. We try to measure the rule of law, not in the law books, not in the statutes or constitutions, but how it is in the living lives of the citizenry. And these are three of the kinds of questions that we ask in these household interviews. Tell me, madam, <clears throat> have you or someone in your family, or do you have testimonial knowledge of physical abuse by the police or by the military? Tell us about that. Have you had to pay a bribe to get a license for your business? Have you had to pay a bribe to get your daughter into a medical clinic? Tell us about that. If you have a dispute with a neighbor or dispute with someone in business, where do you go to have that resolved? How does that work for you? Is it an elder? Is it a chief? Is it a court? Where do you go? Let's hear from Bill Gates about the subject of measurement, if you will. If you want to improve the rule of law, you need a way to measure it. The World Justice Project's Rule of Law Index helps the global community by doing just that. It offers independent, comprehensive data that can be used to drive policy, set benchmarks, and guide successful program development. The index findings go beyond theory to tell us in practical terms how people experience the rule of law in their day-to-day -day lives and how that compares to other people around the world. In this way, the index acts as a diagnostic tool for evaluating the strengths and weaknesses in any given country. This is invaluable to lawmakers, NGOs, businesses, academics, and advocates who are all working for more stable, equitable societies. We've seen these index scores and rankings cited by everyone, from heads of state to journalists to citizens all around the world. It's helping transform the global conversation about the rule of law, and in doing so, providing a new source of knowledge that can improve lives everywhere. Mattering. Why should we be convened? Why should we care, anybody, about the rule of law? Even if we have a generally accepted definition, even if we know how to measure it in an accurate, useful way, so what? Does it matter? Is it just a concept? Without some proof that the rule of law matters in terms of development, it would be a pretty theoretical project to try to advance adherence to the rule of law. And when we say development, we, at least within the project, think in terms of three kinds of development. Economic development, socio-political development, the government, the way it performs, and human development, public health, public education, for example. Let's hear from another legend. about mattering. Dear friends, the rule of law matters to all of us, to the entire human family, wherever we live, however we look, regardless of our ethnicity, religion, gender, geographical location, or class. Strengthening the rule of law is an essential ingredient to enhance justice, peace, and economic and social progress. It underpins functional societies and drives development. There are strong relationships between the rule of law and economic development. The society's educational levels, public health, 
indicators and other areas of human and political development. We have to evaluate and define the rule of law in order for it to lay down strong roots. The World Justice Project has worked for nearly 10 years to develop a universal definition of rule of law and indicators for measuring its application. The 48 indicators that underpin the index are arguably the most sophisticated and universally applicable rule of law indicators ever developed. The index is designed for application in countries with vastly differing social, cultural, economic, and political systems. It speaks to all of us because it matters to all of us. It looks at a nation's adherence to the rule of law from the perspective of how ordinary people experience it, reflecting the law on the streets, not on the books. More than 100,000 citizens and legal experts from 99 countries were surveyed in the development of the index. I am proud to be associated with the World Justice Project. It is helping to change the global conversation about the rule of law. But we cannot sit back on our laurels. Strengthening the rule of law is a never-ending process. No society has ever attained, let alone sustained, a perfect realization of the rule of law. That is the challenge that lies before us. Thank you for supporting the rule of law. God bless you. How's that for an endorsement? <laughs> Economic development, just some graphs. This is not meant to be an academically defensible set of graphs at this point, but to give you some sense of where the academy is going with its studies. What each of these graphs shows you on the y-axis, the vertical axis, is um, amount of degree of adherence to the rule of law, and on the x-axis, one consideration or another. In this case, it's economic development, GDP per capita. No surprise, the more rule of law a country enjoys, the higher GDP per capita. And in terms of inequities within the economic world, this graph shows that the more rule of law you have, the better the spread of income within that rule of law regime. Socio-political development. Here's a comparison of rule of law, more rule of law, more likely a democratic form of government and more rule of law, more likely a peaceful country and community. In the area of human development, public health, more rule of law, less infant mortality. In the area of education, more rule of law, more time in school, more formal education for the population. There is a positive correlation between the rule of law and these forms of development. More study to be done for sure. Um, we believe that the results of that will be all the more reason for more resources to go behind the movement to advance the rule of law. It matters. It matters in so many ways. The project was, base, was formed based on two premises. The first is the leading premise, which is that the rule of law is the foundation of communities of Equity, you got to start with equity to have economic opportunity, which follows. You probably have to have both of those things, don't you, to have peace? So we think of it in, the, in that order. Communities, functional communities, meaning communities of 
equity, opportunity, and peace. And the trailing premise is, if there's some validity to that lead premise, what can you do about it? And our answer, at least, is you can try to put together a multidisciplinary collaboration, that that would be the most effective way to advance the rule of law. As I said earlier, we need all walks of work to understand that you can't do what you want to do in whatever your chosen work is if there's not this foundation of the rule of law in your community. It just doesn't work in a capricious, corrupt, even a lawless community, no matter what you're trying to accomplish. An invitation, uh, if you will, a call to action. Um, please uh, have a look at our four universal principles for meaning and improve them, criticize them, make us smarter, and finally come to a definition that you will use in your work. Use the data from our index for measuring adherence to the rule of law. Tell us how we can improve that index. We're gonna to go to more countries, we're gonna go broader and deeper, we're gonna do more subnational and more subject matter indexing. All of that is in the future for us, but it's gotta be useful data for you, so tell us what can we do to do that better. And finally, promote and learn from the research that connects the rule of law with these forms of development. We have choices. On the left of these next screenshots will be a non-rule of law picture. On the right side, a rule of law picture by way of illustration. Does it matter to the environment? Take your choice. Does it matter in terms of economic development? We have choices. Public education. Freedom of expression, freedom of the press. That's a reporter in the jail cell, by the way. Public safety, how do we deploy our public safety resources in a way which is rational and constructive and consistent with the rule of law? Labor rights, there's labor and there's labor. Public health. Engineering, why do some buildings tumble? because the building codes are a lack thereof, because the good materials are going out the side door. And finally, if I may, my favorite quotation from the modern era, from an unlikely source, the German-American Albert Einstein, whose theory of relativity too was recently proven, again, to be true. How, how did he do that? He had time to say this, and I'll read it, because I think it's so moving. We must learn the difficult lesson that an endurable future of humanity will be possible only if decisions are based on law and justice and not on self-righteous power. What could ring truer today than those words from him? And another quotation from a deep thinker, T.S. Eliot in the Four Quartets. For us, there's only <clears throat> the trying, which leads me to my final slide, which is to remind you that we have work to do, all of us, this week and beyond. It's good work, and there's a lot of it. Thank you. <laughs>